Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today talking about a RPG, but not just any RPG, an underappreciated one, one that not enough people talk about, and that RPG is Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Ladies and gentlemen, this game was a title that just came and went in 2012. It was a game that I enjoyed thoroughly, and it was one of the first games during the Xbox 360 and PS3 generation where I played the demo for it and went, man, this is great, and I actually went out and bought the game. Go figure, game demos are effective. Now, today, I just wanted to put a random hidden gem on your radar, or maybe I wanted to help you reminisce a bit on one of the games that I felt was quite defining during the 360 PS3 generation as a role-playing game. This came after Skyrim, where I feel like it harmed a lot of its potential, but also there's a lot of mismanagement behind the scenes that a number of game docs have covered when it came to EA and Kurt Schilling, former MLB pitcher, gone game dev who wanted to make this epic fantasy game. And let's just say that there was like $75 million sunk into this entire franchise and not much came of it. It became a gigantic legal battle for years and years and years, which finally recently had settled. So it was finally over after I think like seven, eight years, something crazy along those lines. But more to my point, I think Kingdoms of Amalur is a fantastic game in a number of ways. And I just wanted to spotlight that in today's video where we don't have much gaming news to go over. So let's either go on a trip down memory lane or I'm showing you something new. This is a RPG mostly driven by its combat. Now I know for some that's a turn off because for a lot of my audience, I think you guys and gals imagine Role playing usually means I make a decision in the story and there's huge ramifications to the world. And don't get me wrong, I think that's the best. But this came at a time where developers really had to pick and choose. You couldn't have, say, for a lot of people, The Witcher 3, where you have this thoughtful combat system, but it's also a game that allowed for choice and consequence throughout the story, like significant choices. You just don't see that as often in that prior generation. Even Skyrim had to prioritize its adventuring, its exploration over huge story choices. I think one of the most significant ones you could really make came down to siding with the Stormcloaks or the Empire. And so as I'm sure you've put together here, they went with the combat for this game. And I have to say, that's what really helps set it apart. We'll talk about the story in a little bit, but the combat's the real superstar in Kingdoms of Amalur because you have a variety of weapons to choose from, from great hammers, swords, daggers, and even chakrams, plus many more. By the way, chakrams, holy moly. Have you ever seen flying discs go around and eviscerate your enemies? Because that is exactly what chakrams are. But anyway, you can equip, say, chakrams and a sword, and you can mix and match between those to create your own combos, plus magic, archery, blocking, parrying, all this stuff combines together to make this arcade like hack and slash yet thoughtful combat system. And that doesn't even include fate shifting. So that's one of the more significant aspects of Kingdoms of Amalur. What this ability does is it ties into the story, of course, powers up your attacks, it slows down time. So if you're surrounded by say eight, nine enemies, which is common, you can wipe all of them out and then you pick one of them press a button, and there's a little QTE where you just mash a button, whether it's X, Y, B, A, what have you. You mash one of those buttons, and this will just help determine the XP bonus you're going to get, and it follows up with a brutal finisher. But when you combine wiping out tons of enemies, a large XP boost where you see the XP bar fill up on the bottom really quick, it's empowering, the ending is brutal, it just feels good to play this game. And you can't say that about a lot of RPGs. A lot of them reward you in a more strategic manner, where this game, as I said, is more arcadey. It's more in your face. You're rolling around, you're dodging, you're blocking, you're parrying, you're switching between a huge great hammer, and then all of a sudden you're using tiny daggers. There's a lot there, but it all works fantastically well. And you're going to be doing this fighting a lot. So if you do enjoy it, most of the quests end up with you fighting. Most areas you encounter end up with you fighting. There's a lot of fighting, and that can lead into some repetition that we will touch on in the story segment. But there are also specializations that help build out your character even more. So there are, to a degree, builds between your weapon, your armor, what you're using as a specialization, the attributes you're filling out. This is truly an RPG, and there are skills that affect things such as crafting, alchemy, speechcraft, where this affects quest outcomes, where you can threaten people. You can even 
kill some non-essential NPCs, which uh, I got to say, there are certain RPGs nowadays that you can't do that to. So that's pretty significant for an action RPG in my eyes. Furthermore, and I know for my audience, this is a big one. This RPG doesn't really overstay its welcome. If you want to just play for 30 hours and beat the story and some of the side content, you can do just that. There is plenty of side content to keep you company well after the credits roll, but I would say that some of it does get a little repetitive. This is where I'm going to touch on some of the story stuff. I feel like Kingdoms of Amalur leans so heavily on its combat that you have a lot of rinse and repeat feeling quests like go here to this cave, go here to this fortress, go here to this outpost, kill these people, and then all of a sudden a big boss monster appears. You fight that, you get your quest reward. So it's about the loot, but not in like a Destiny way or a Borderlands way, but there is a lot of loot where you're switching out your armor, your weapons, you're leveling up so you're getting new skills, you're getting new combos, you're getting new abilities. But it does heavily lean on its combat, and the quest design is based around that, always trying to jam you into a fight. So there can be a little bit of wearing down the player there, especially nowadays. Back then, this was awesome, like just tons of free-flowing combat in a role-playing game. Like I said, that was during a time you had to pick one or the other so back then it worked nowadays it still works it's just that you see the flaws a little more clearly with games who have sort of balanced out the scale kingdoms of amalur is not an open world game once again i think this is a plus because we've had a plethora of open world games over the last couple of years and i think for some people that space has been saturated so there are open areas but it's not like fully open world which i think is personally great but i think once again this will tickle the fancy of a lot of my viewers because much like with the outer worlds people really liked how it was compartmentalized and it was around 30 hours where it was a great rpg but it didn't overstay its welcome you're kind of getting that here with kingdoms of amalur except you have a choice of diving into more content and there's stuff like faction quest lines kind of like what you see in all the elder scrolls games so they definitely take inspiration there you'll see some familiarity but overall the quest work, the stories, um, they're not fantastic. And I think I can touch a little bit on why that was the case, at least for me, when I dove back into this game. Kingdoms of Amalur's lore wrestles with an element that I've always had an issue with in a lot of fantasy games. In an attempt to create the depth of the universe, there are dozens and dozens of characters, places, moments that are oft referenced, but it's hard to keep track of them all, like the Colossae, the Empire of Hyperia, the Corinthian Republic, the Apatir Sickness, and so on and so forth. There's so many names with dazzling spins tossed on them, and a lot of fantasies do this. Like, instead of my name just being Maddie, it's like, Matthias of the Officia! You know, like, it's like, what? Like, can't you just have a name? And Maybe that's just me, maybe I'm just an idiot, and I will fully admit to that, but I just think that a lot of fantasy games try to dazzle up their words by putting an Ia at the end, or a Lasse at the end, and it's like, look, you know, just have a normal name, I think it just sticks with people more, like, I even struggle with this with Elder Scrolls to a degree, with their, like, fourth era in Mundas, and, like, all the month renaming and stuff, I just, I guess that's what separates the universe, it makes it, yes, fantasy but i feel like for me i struggle to have the lore stick and i think that's just me because for example fallout or more games grounded in realism stick with me more than a fantasy world even with that personal gripe i do feel that kingdom of amalur's storylines aren't that great there are some good ones in there the factions are interesting the world is definitely interesting i just don't think a lot of it will stick with you and and part of that may be due to the fact that the future of the series is unknown so you don't want to get like deeply invested you don't want to let the game take yourself over because you're like you know what there may not be another one of these and i don't want to hurt myself in the process really because back in september of 2018 thq nordic acquired kingdoms of amalur and it scrapped mmo now obviously the big question since then has been where is the remaster sadly ea would have to approve of this remaster which means that they probably want a cut of it and i imagine deals are still ongoing with thq and ea or maybe just like THQ likes to be, man, they just eat up these IP. They're just like, no, 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 yes, this is good. Yes, more property. And that's all. That's all. They just want it to have it. And they've spent a ton of money over the last number of years. They have, I think, well over 100 games in development, they said. So this could just be another one in their long list of IPs. But I do hope they plan on doing something with it, whether it be a sequel or a remaster. I imagine remaster would be the safer option. 
of the two and that's probably the one that would net them the most cash but yeah overall kingdoms of amalur was a game i enjoyed going back to i really appreciate its combat i appreciate its color palette i like the art style i think that there's a lot to love here uh, the universe is intriguing, although not a lot of it sticks, and I think it's because of some of the fantasy tropes that, especially games back in that time and even earlier, struggled with. But through and through, this is a good game you can get very cheap when a Steam sale rolls around, or maybe you get it on eBay for the 360 or PS3. Just Kingdoms of Amalur is a fun game that I don't think gets enough attention. It's always about what happened with Kurt Schilling and how he really mismanaged his studio and the financial aspect of it all but I think behind that is a really surprisingly good game and I just wanted to put it on people's radars today so this is the RPG that I feel no one really talks about anymore Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning what do you think of it let me know in the comments down below I'm itching to see what you guys think and I'll talk with you soon be sure to follow me on Twitter follow me on Instagram those links are in the description down below big thank you to all of the patrons who just continue to kill it with that support appreciate each and every single one of you and I'll talk with you guys soon stay sexy stay active I love you all peace